Hi everybody, welcome back. This is Kevin McMahon with Bear Creek Bees. And uh, today what we're going to be talking about is converting uh, single frame mini mating nukes into double two frame mini mating nukes. Very, very simple project, very, very simple project. But uh, I'm gonna go over the reasons why I'm doing this. Uh, if you remember back in the, back in the spring, or back last winter actually, I had a project where I built these mini mating nukes uh, from a design by uh, uh, Barnyard Bees down in Georgia. Dave down in Barnyard Bees was uh, kind enough to uh, have a video uh, explaining how he builds them and, and uh, how they work for him and whatnot. And uh, so that was my project last, last year was to build these mini mating nukes. Uh, I used them uh, all summer, and uh, I had uh, varied degrees of success. Early in the season, I had less success than uh, probably as we crept more towards June uh, than when at the beginning of May when I attempted to use them. Um, two of the reasons I'm going to give you for for me wanting to combine these into uh, side by side two frame mini mini nukes. Number one is, I found that these were just a little tippy. Um, I could have built a bigger base, I could have probably built a bigger base on them and, and just leave them alone and maybe that's what I'll do with some of my other ones. But uh, um, I stacked these probably um, 12 inches apart on, a, on, on my long platform and uh, one day I came back, it was relatively windy, and all these had, the wind had hit one, and it just dominoed, and they all tipped over, because they're very, you know, they're very, very, they got a lot of surface area for the wind, and they don't have a very uh, strong base, uh, or they're very wide base. So that was number one. Number two, um, you know, down in Georgia, where Dave from Barnier Bees uses his uh, single frame mini mini nooks to great success. Uh, up here, it's pretty cold at night, uh, all the way through probably Memorial Weekend, um, which is, I don't know, like 20th of May, somewhere around there. Uh, and there, since you're only really installing one frame of brood, and these are for the walkaway splits, obviously, and, uh, and then an empty frame for them to build out, there is not a lot of uh, bees f to uh, help keep the brood uh, that you've cannibalized from another uh, nuke uh, warm. So you can get chilled brood, and I had that problem uh, quite a few times, actually. They just, they're just, there just aren't enough bees to, uh, to keep this box r warm. So uh, what I wanted to do was combine two of these together like this uh, and have them share a wall and the heat from the two uh, hives will uh, uh, the shared heat will should help the brood on each side now when I do this I'm going to be putting uh, the frames with the, the brood that I want to walk away from on the inside and then the frames that I want them to build out will be on the outside. Uh, so that's that's my plan anyways. Uh, number two, it also provides a very, very, very stable base. These, these do not move at all. Uh, one of the problems that I, I had because I alternated on my stand, I alternated uh, entrances. Uh, so every other one, the entrance would be facing east or west or north or south, depending on the direction of my stand. Um, that um, posed a little bit of a problem because my stand was tilted, you know, it was a little uneven or whatnot, and I suppose I could have sat there and, and monkeyed with it, but uh, these, these, uh, the bottom of these, uh, the design for which did not have any way to drain out any uh, water or syrup that spilled. So 
what I did was I just drilled holes down the bottom each one and then just put uh, uh, number eight mesh screening to uh, to drain them. Put it in the front and the back on these doubles um, because if you, if I tip it, you know I've got the the entrances uh, opposite, obviously, and the reason for that is this is a mating hook. Okay, I don't want the queen to be confused and go into the wrong hole, so I want. You know, if the queen comes out on this side, I want her to come in on this side, and she, there won't be any confusion as to uh, which uh, entrance to go in. If I had them both out the front, there's a there's a, a chance. I don't know what what the chance would be, but uh, there's a chance that she could end up going into the wrong hive, and then um, obviously she'd probably get killed, balled up and killed. So, to uh, improve my success rate, however, when you do that. When these are tipped, uh, just a little bit, one way or the other, you know, you always want to, like I said, usually tip it towards the uh, um, front of the hive to drain it out or whatnot. Um, your feed can drain or your water, your rain water will congregate down the bottom and it really has no place to go. So that's why I, I drilled those holes down the bottom. Uh, and so I got it on both sides. So no matter which way I tip these, or which way they are tipped, because I can put these level. It's not a big deal. It's just that you never really get level out in the field. Um, you know, it's going to tip one way or the other. So either way it tips, there's going to be a drain hole on either side, and that's why I did it. Now I made the holes one inch in diameter. I could have just drilled some quarter inch holes, but they would might get clogged up by debris or dead bees or whatever, and I just didn't want that to have to happen. So you know, that's what I did. Uh, when I combined these hives together, what I did was, all I did was, I had some scrap wood cleat for cleats, and uh, I cut them to size, and then I just, uh, I used a uh, clamp, clamped them together so that they are perfectly level on the top, because that's the most important place that you need to, to be level. And uh, I just stapled the cleats, an extra cleat on the bottom. And you can still pick it up, and it's, you know, it is what it is. Um, so I've got this one finished up, and I've got a, uh, a single, a solid uh, lid for this double nuke. And the reason I did that uh, is because if I was to use the, uh, the original covers on this which is this one and uh, and this one uh, it leaves a seam down the middle uh, and that's not a big deal except heavy rains uh, the rain will get down there and and then your both your nukes would get full of water and that's not what you really want to have happen to your uh, mating nukes so it's better to go with a single uh, now, could I just, I, pro I probably could combine this and put a, a cleat right down the middle, and maybe that's what I'll do for this one, just put a cleat down the middle, just so uh, I can seal it up, but it has to be solid. You can't have two halves like this. It's just not not a good idea. Uh, Going to have holes uh, on either side for feed, so, you know, you can just throw your, throw your jug up over the top. Uh, Let's also go here. Uh, I can work on this. This is what is called duck, duck cloth. All right. This is a canvas type material. You can buy it at Hancock Fabrics or fabric stores. Uh, it's it's a it's lighter than you know the really really heavy canvas, but it's uh, it's heavier than bed sheets or anything like that. And uh, I got this idea actually from the University of Guelph. Uh, G U E L P H. Uh, which is, um, they have a YouTube channel for beekeeping, and uh, and they have a ton of great educational videos. And this is what they all they use for their top covers. Uh, for their ten frame, five frame doesn't really matter. This is what they use, and uh, it seems to work out really really well for them. So this is what I'm giving it a shot. Uh, but working on these hives, obviously, you only want to have 
you know, you only want to get to half of the hive at a time. So you don't want to have bees uh, come from this hive, getting into this hive. You don't want the queen definitely coming up and uh, moving over or anything. So sliding this over and uh, being able to work your frames, uh, your two frames here in your, in your mini mating nuke. Again, uh, if you can, hopefully you can see this down the bottom here. But uh, but you can see the holes that I drilled, and uh, In the, in the future, uh, I plan on just, you know, uh, actually in July, I actually uh, did a video, and you can find it on my YouTube channel, where uh, I converted a five frame nuke into a, uh, a double uh, two frame uh, mini mating nuke. And that's going to be what I do from now on. Uh, the only reason for this and what I'm doing here is to utilize what I already had made. Uh, you know, rather than uh, you know leaving them in a the corner and not being able, not not using them, I would rather just combine them, put the cleat on, something really simple, and uh, be able to utilize it. But this five frame uh, nuke, uh, you can dado a, a single uh, dado down the middle, and either put uh, the one I did in in July. I put a three quarter inch divider board and I nailed it in place and the reason for that is because of this handle now I got these ends from uh, these are the boxes from uh, Man Lake but uh, if you dado the three-quarter inch it will actually open up that hole right here uh, so you do not want to have a removable one because you'll have a big hole right there so uh, for that one it's nailed in place. But in the future, what I plan on doing is taking and using this quarter inch plywood as a middle divider. And I'm just going to put a thin little dado, not quite so deep as to leave a hole here. It might be a little thin, but it won't be that bad and using this as a divider that I can pull in and out. And the reason for that is um, then I can convert it very easily back into a five frame single nuke just by closing off one of the entrances. I can just close off an entrance, boom, I got a five frame nuke after I pull the divider out. So, uh, you know, you get a lot of ideas from a lot of beekeepers. Um, you know, I got the idea for the uh, the vent holes down the bottom from Jason Crisman from JC's Bees. Uh, that's what he did, uh, and it just solved the problem right away for me. Uh, for all that pulled up syrup or water, it it drowned my bees sometimes in my mini a text message. in my mini mini nukes. It also uh, the syrup. It, I also lost a couple of queens that drowned in that syrup. So, uh, so. In the future, it's going to be this. But this project was just literally for for me for utilizing these two frame mini mini nukes and trying to combine them. Now, uh, because I was experimenting all last winter, I, I made my mini mini nukes different. Each one was just slightly different. I was trying to make corrections, improve, maybe make it a little longer, make it a little shorter. Uh, so I have three of them that I can't combine together. Uh, because they're just not the same size and they just wouldn't work to combining it. But I was able to combine four of them uh, into two two frame mini mini nukes. Good enough for me. I have a third, so now I got six uh, two frame mini mini nukes and I got three singles. And then, of course, I'm going to make a couple more uh, doubles 
out of uh, the five frame uh, nukes. Uh, that's going to be my next project on my next uh, on my next video. But I just wanted to show you this uh, again. Um, this duck cloth really works well. I had a pad underneath this duck cloth that I folded and I, I, I laid it down and I stapled it in place because I, I, I was just worried about bees uh, going from side to side, uh, from one side to the other. I just didn't want any opportunity. But with a single lid like this, there's no way that they're going to, uh, they're going to be able to, to, get, to get through. Um, and when I put that pad there and I stuck this down, I had a, it would it would rock to one side, so one side or the other would be lifted up just slightly, and you could get robbing on these mini mani nukes, which is a big, uh, which is a big issue because these hives are weak and uh, they can get robbed out real quick, real fast. So you want to reduce, you know, you, you want to reduce the entrance to as minimal as possible uh, as far as what bees can get in and, and not uh, allow them to protect it uh, somewhat. Um, again, uh, if, I, if I do this, I can, <laughs> if I do this, I can, these are single gallon, these are, these are, these are the lids for my pail feeders. Uh, I can get two pail feeders side by side here, on here, and it doesn't have to go, you know, the, the hole doesn't have to line up over the hole. It can be to the side because actually there's a there's a half inch gap that will allow the bees to to uh, walk around in here. So you can just, because you don't want it hanging over the edge because bees from elsewhere can get in and then start stealing all your syrup. Uh, but I can put two side by side here if I have a hole here and a hole here. Uh, I definitely can put two pails. Uh, a gallon of syrup is probably too much for uh, these two frame mini mini nukes. So that's why I just go with the I just go with the quart jars. Um, you know, they work. Funny thing, it's it's 20 degrees out. It was 10 degrees last night, and this was has been sitting out forever. And the syrup has yet to freeze. It's funny that that syrup is uh, is so uh, it doesn't freeze as uh, as easily as just straight water does. So, anyways, that's my project. Uh, I had to redo this video because as I was doing it, um, everything was whited out in the front, and I could not figure out why. Uh, but I had snow behind me, uh, behind the camera, so. I had to move it inside a little bit. Uh, welcome to my uh, my mini workshop. It's a uh, an unorganized mess. I, I realize, but this is my work, my wood shop, my storage shop, my mechanic shop. Uh, I do everything in here, and I, there is just not enough room to put stuff. So it ends up being just a disorganized mess. But um, I'm able to find everything that I need. So forgive the mess. Well, um, if you got any questions, comments, upgrades uh, that you can think of, uh, shoot me a shoot me a comment in the comments below. Uh, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, uh, it'll help me in the search uh, engines to uh, get my videos out there to other beekeepers. Um, again, I am always learning uh, about beekeeping this is my this will be my third year and uh, you know last year was an up and down year my first year was okay but you know I lost all my hives after the first year now I'm sitting here waiting you know this is what we got to do in the winter time is just sit here and tinker uh, with our equipment uh, because there's not a lot to do you can't tell you shouldn't touch your hives I don't I don't go out there and mess with my hives uh, one of the things that I did, actually, with these, is I cut off the porch, um, and I'm going to be doing that on all my hives, the ones that 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 become um, that are not being used. I'm going to cut off the porches on all of them because, as I was observing bees, uh, 
they don't really need the porch. Uh, and in the winter time, these aren't really meant for winter time. Just just throwing that out there. But even even in the in the summertime, uh, in the winter time, the, all the porch does is collect snow. I'll be honest with you. Now it might be good to have a porch on it if you um, have your hives directly on the ground. But if you got them up off the ground or whatever, you really don't need the porch. The bees will fly straight straight. They'll just land right on the outside of the hive and walk right in. This is just what they do. They really don't need a landing porch. And uh, you know, sometimes when we start out, we do things that other people do, and there's you you wonder why are we doing this? But you just keep doing it, and you keep repeating it to other people, and it goes on and on and on. And uh, I've talked to other beekeepers, and they, and they they kind of agree, and they say, yeah, I've started removing porches on mine as well because they're really really not needed. Um, like I said, they stack snow and then they block the entrance and then your venting for your winter is shot. So you want to get rid of that. You don't You don't really need that. Um, and, you know, it's just another place for, for rainwater to sit. And if you ever watch the bees come out, they'll flip over and then they, they get stuck in the, in the water and it can't get back up. Uh, so it just, uh, it just lessens that, as it were. Um, that's a little thing, just a little observation, a little change that I'm going to be making uh, with my uh, with my beekeeping. Uh, anyways, again, if you got any comments or questions or better ways of doing this, uh, feel free to uh, to comment below. Uh, again, this is like I said, this is just just a small project, just to uh, just to um, utilize what I had already made. Uh, my mini mating news. So uh, I hope uh, there's something that uh, for you that do have mini mating nukes and, and you want to you want to do it, uh, want to try this, knock yourself out. Um, just one quick comment on the difference. Maybe it's easier. Maybe it's easier to show you on this one, but uh, you can also see. Now this is obviously just as wide as as five frame nuke, but it also this has a double three quarter inner wall. And if you just have one, if you use a three quarter, you're going to have more space to to uh, work your to work your um, your frames. You're going to have you're going to have more space. Uh, and if you use the quarter inch plywood, you're really going to have, you're going to probably save, but you're going to save another half an inch. Uh, by going with a single wall, three quarters, you're saving, well, three quarters of an inch. That's an extra three quarters of an inch or three eighths on, for each box extra that will allow you to play with your with your frames. So they're not so tight so you can get, get in and work, and work them. Um, and then... So that, that's an extra three eighths per, and then if you use, like I said, if you use the quarter inch uh, plywood, well, that, that leaves you a quarter inch on each side, so it's three eighths plus a quarter. So um, you, you're saving yourself five eighths of an inch uh, in each box, extra space to work your frames. Um, so that's another reason to go with the uh, middle divider. Uh, I'm gonna do it, like I said, I'm gonna do a video on this, uh, on the middle divider. Uh, after I'm going to put it all together first. I'm not going to do a how-to and I'll show you all the every cut on the on the on the saw or anything like that. Uh, if you see me with uh, all five of my digits, then I, everything went well. Uh, but after I get it done and I'm happy with the effort, uh, then I'll show you and I will uh, tell you how I did it and uh, and you can decide for yourself whether it's something that you want to uh, uh, proceed with. Again, these mini mating nukes are for if you are interested in raising your own queens. That's it in a nutshell. Uh, either raising your own queens to replace old queens, and your hives are getting older, or you can use these as starters. And once these get going, you take these out, you put them in a five frame nuke, and you let that colony grow. And if it grows big enough, then you put it in a ten frame nuke, and now you've got a uh, sustainable uh, 
hive to produce honey for you. Um, so it's all, and it's again raising your own queens. It's it's cost savings in the long run. I mean, queens are, you know, by the time shipping rolls around and everything else, it's fifty bucks each. You know, uh, I, I replace queens sometimes two and three queens uh, on some of my hives because the, the queen died, got killed right away. I've, you know, I've put queens in, they were gone in three weeks. Uh, they started laying and everything, and then they just took off. They were gone. I have no idea what the heck happened. Well, now you got to buy another queen for. I know you're at a hundred bucks. You're never going to get that back if you're just selling honey from that hive. It's just, it, it, you're just not. So raising your own queen stock. Uh, it's always good to keep bringing in some queens every year uh, to uh, to energize uh, a gen new genetics into the area that you're that you're uh, you're beekeeping in. But um, having your own queen queens to uh, to raise your own nukes or to replace queens is just the most economic thing that I can think of that I could do for myself. So um, maybe if I make enough nukes this year, I'll be able to sell a few nukes. You know, I'm not selling 100 nukes or anything like that. I mean, if I sell, you know, five or six or seven nukes uh, this year, um, well, you know, that's, you know, 800 bucks, eight, nine hundred dollars, uh, which will help me immensely pay for a lot of the uh, wood and everything that I bought last year, building equipment and things like that, so maybe I can recoup some of the money. Because you're, you're, at least for me as a hobbyist, I'm never going to recoup money just on the honey sales. I mean, I had 150 pounds this year. I sold it five bucks a pound. Uh, I gave a lot of it away to friends and family, so I probably ended up selling 100 pounds. Uh, so that's 500 bucks. Well, I spent $2,500 last year on lumber and, and equipment and, you know, bee suits and uh, queens. Uh, queens cost me. And, 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 and not to mention, because all my hives died last year, I bought, I bought eight nukes. That was $800. Well, it was more than $800, actually. But uh, you, get the, you get the point. Doing it yourself, raising your own queens is a way to... Uh, to help yourself in the long run um, financially. And uh, having a queen stock that makes it through winter, that's queen that you that you want. Uh, that's a genetic trait that you want uh, in your apiary. And you know, getting queens from elsewhere, you just don't know how they're gonna survive the winter. It's a crapshoot. So if you can get a, a queen through winter and uh, a hive is healthy, that's the queen stock that you want to start pulling from and uh, and getting around your apiary. So anyways, if you got any questions, comments, like I said, leave it below. Uh, give me a like, thumbs up, and uh, until next time, happy beekeeping.